Endochondral ossification. Most bones develop from a cartilage model. At the end of the fourth week of development, in other words, when you're still in your mother's womb as one month old, you have the formation of cartilage that's beginning. Um, that should say begins, not beings. Eighth week of development, so second month, your endochondral ossification begins and continues in different areas, literally until the age of 18 to 21, so until you are completely an adult. Um, there's seven steps, which you can see here and you can see here, but for the sake of seeing this on a screen, I wanted to blow everything up. But realize that what we're going through are literally these seven steps here that has not changed. So, um, chondroblasts start to produce a cartilage model that's surrounded by perichondrium. I want you to notice that the perichondrium is actually only on the sides here. It's not on the ends. Remember that the ends of our bone have that articular cartilage that covers them up to help our joints to move more smoothly. So we don't want to cover that because where the perichondrium is, is eventually going to become bone. So number two, the perichondrium of the diaphysis becomes the periosteum. You can see that in the center, you kind of got a collar of periosteum right dead center around there. Internally, the chondrocytes begin to hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is just a very fancy way of saying swelling. So they begin to swell up. They begin to um, expand, basically making a better model for the bone to eventually cover. The chondrocytes um, release vesicles. They promote hydroxyapatite formation in the matrix. Basically, that cartilage matrix that used to be kind of rubbery is now going to be completely solid. It's going to turn into cement. Now, if I put you in a cement box and don't give you food or water, eventually you would die. That actually is what's happening to the cartilage cells that are in here. They're surrounding themselves in a cement box, and then they die, basically leaving the template that the bone can actually use. Chondrocytes will eventually die, leaving calcified matrix behind as a template for appositional bone growth. Now remember, appositional, very, very simple. It means that it's new growth on top of old growth. So I'm going to be making new bone on top of the old cartilage model that was left behind. Number three, the primary ossification center forms as blood vessels and osteoblasts invade the calcified cartilage. So you actually, um, hang on one second, guys. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure my phone is completely off because the last few recordings I've had it go off. Um, you've got this invasion of a blood vessel and you can see that the bone here does not look organized. It's not like I've got compound compact bone, compound, really? Compact bone on the outside and spongy bone on the inside. It's just kind of all over the place. This is actually a form of woven bone. Remember what I said that woven bone was like a rough draft. So the osteoblast lay down bone matrix, replacing it with calcified cartilage, replacing the calcified cartilage, forming that kind of spongy woven bone look. Now, as we move to number four, you'll notice that this is actually starting to look more like the bone that we know. We've got compact bone on the outside. We've got the medullary cavity forming in the middle. So the process of bone collar formation, cartilage calcification, and spongy bone production continues using bone remodeling, contributing to the final bone shape, which you can see there. That looks like the classic picture that we just saw before. Calcified cartilage begins to form also in the epiphysius. You can see this here. We have bone on the ends of our um, long bones. We have, and not cartilage, I should say, um, except for the articular cartilage. Let me qualify that. So we need to replace the epiphysius here with bone as well. So the osteoclasts help form the medullary cavity in the center of the diaphysis, and some of the cells begin to become um, red bone marrow. So. As a child, we do have quite a bit of red bone marrow because we're mass producing blood cells. As we get older, it gets replaced by that yellow bone marrow that I pointed out earlier. So number five, the secondary ossification center um, 
centers, because we've got two ends to the bone, begin to form in the epiphysius. You can see that blood vessel invading. You can see that bone is starting to replace that cartilage, that calcified cartilage. This happens around the eighth month of fetal development, so that by the time that you're born, you actually primarily have bone in your bones. Now, if you're born at month nine, I should qualify that because if you're a preemie, that's not necessarily true. Number six, the original bone model is almost completely ossified. You'll notice that I have this region here and I still have my articular cartilage in place. This region here is going to be our epiphyseal plate, our growth plate. The original cartilage model is almost completely ossified. Unossified cartilage becomes the epiphyseal plate, which is how our long bones grow in length, how they get longer and the articular cartilage, which covers the ends of our joints, which we never want to be replaced with bone. So this is a mature bone. This is an adult bone. Notice that epiphyseal plate is now the epiphyseal line, meaning that we actually are um, solid bone throughout the long bones. Why? Because at this point, we're mature enough to reproduce. We don't need to grow anymore. So in mature bone, the epiphyseal plate has become the epiphyseal line and all the cartilage in the epiphysius, except for the articular cartilage, has become bone. We still need this so that our joints move smoothly.